we made it out one last time. Well, not one last time. We'll be out here all week. Um, I'm going to have a bunch of videos for you guys up until the closing of Lake Simcoe. After Lake Simcoe, we are moving out to the Muskokas and we're going to be chasing more lake trout um, and burbot. But for the most part, we are on Lake Simcoe. It is a beautiful day. We just had a huge rain and like all the snow melted. And then it was like a basically a lake on the there was a basically a lake on the lake, if that makes sense. Yeah, but you'll see. Like it, it was it was ridiculous. The sled was covered, and then all of a sudden we had a cold weather with snow, and now we have probably one of the best conditions yet. Absolutely rock solid, beautiful ice. Um, yeah, let's get to it. We're on a nice spot. We're gonna go for some lake trout, burbot, whitefish. Who knows? Hopefully they bite. It's, sun just came up, so no time wasting. Let's get to it. Whoa, that was sick. Oh my gosh, I literally just saw him rolling in. That is a big whitey. That's a big whitey. And there we go. Whoa, as you've seen in that little video, ate that new dart minnow. They set the hook. Beautiful. Ate that top hook again. You know, we've been talking, that's the topic of this year. Boom. Right to the yacht. Uh, that's the juice. Nothing to say about it. That is the juice. These clams aren't the best for canceling light, I'll tell you that. They're not the best for canceling light out. Come on, fish. Where are you? I see another one coming in. Another one's coming in. Is another one coming in? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe so. Maybe not, maybe so. Yes, there is one on the left of my panoptics coming in. I smell you, I smell you. Come over here. I gotta eat something though. I'm getting hungry here, a little lightheaded. Mmm, baby. Bam, right there. That's the juice. Cucumber oils, cinnamon bun. Mmm. Boom. Here comes one. Again. Top up. That was sick. Again. <laughs> Just finished eating. That's a big white. Uh, I knew set the hook dart minnow. You see that thing just whoop. Ate that pop hook again. Beautiful fish. This is unreal. Today's starting off to be a good day. 26 incher. We're gonna let this fish go. I'm gonna let that fish go. See ya. And we're back. What I got going on is I got an underwater camera as what you're, what you're visually seeing is the underwater camera and I, um, and I have my pan optics set up. Reason being is because I find that when I have the camera down, a lot of the time if you're watching a camera, you won't anticipate those fish coming in early. And a lot of the time when you see them on the camera and you react, that reaction can kind of scare them when it's when it's so close because the way this camera it's really zoomed in and I have it pretty far away from my hut so a lot of the time is when you're watching through a camera screen you don't see what's coming in from the sides of you or around you for that matter and if you're running just a camera a lot of the time when you have a fish come through and you see it on your camera it's too late because you're not reacting to where the way they want it to be. And you can see that I have this panoptics on. You can see when I'm calling these fish, I'm saying, oh, here comes a fish. I'll set up my lure exactly the way I want it to, and I'll see it on my camera, and you'll see them come right up. They'll eat it, no hesitation. Why? Because I'm able to see them before actually setting the hook into them. And it's all because I'm using another sonar with that camera. And I mean, if you're having trouble catching them just with a sonar and you need that camera, I highly recommend using a sonar with a camera. It might be a lot, yes, 
but you will put more fish on the ice, especially if you have a hard time feeling those bites, you will put more fish on the ice. Why? Because you're able to see them come in from a distance, you know there's gonna be a fish coming in, hence you'll set yourself up before that, and then you'll see them on the camera come in and they'll eat it every time. So, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. Let's see if we can put some more on the ice. There's one. Oh, I didn't even see that one. One of the top hook. What do you want, bud? Top? Bottom? What the? I honestly didn't even see that fish come in. He still wants it though. He's still looking around. He's in the distance. Here he comes. Full blitz. Got him off the bottom. That was sick. Saw him smoke that. That was really cool. That is so freaking cool. Seeing him just come in and eat that bottom bait. That's on the menace. I think I've caught maybe three fish. Or maybe five whiteies all year off bottom. Which is interesting to say. Caught like five whiteies up bottom. That one ate that menace jig right there. You can see that in its face. Cool color on it. Goby. A little darker water. Water colors clear. I want some to stand out. Call them in. And that's been doing the, the damage right there. Just another cucumber. And we're gonna get that thing back in the water. Get this fish on back. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Pretty cool, hopefully a laker comes by. Fish are rolling through. Just uh, got a lot of people rolling in on us. Hopefully it uh, doesn't get too noisy out here, but fish are coming through. Let's get back down there, catch some more on the ice. Look at that, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Mm. Mm. That is the deal, yo. Gotta eat. Gotta eat. You gotta be focused. You don't eat. You're not focused. You're not dialed. You start becoming impatient. You start thinking of things. You don't want to be thinking of things. The fish are coming. You gotta weigh them out. You gotta have that sandwich. Mm-hmm. That come through. Really cool. See that thing? GoPro highlight. That was pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. That was really cool seeing that bird come in. Ah, damn, I stirred the bottom up with my other lure because it's a one ounce pounding um, pout jig. It's a, it's it's what I use for burbit. So I've been pounding bottom. You can see all the silt I stirred up. Created a lot of silt down there, and all of a sudden. I seen the burbot show up instantly. And I was like, oh damn, and he went right for that top hook and he didn't eat it. Ah, shoot. It's unfortunate. 
I thought for sure he was going to eat it. Damn. Just going to quickly run down what we got going here. If you guys seen in my videos, if you're looking at rods, if you're looking to get a rod that, you know, you really honestly really feel everything and probably the best rods to use for whitefish or lake trout or any fish for that matter. Pretty much everyone on Lake Simcoe right now is running these rods. Um, if you haven't tried them, try them. They are the ice custom rods. They are all handcrafted. Beautiful bend. This is the 36 medium. So I basically have all 36 inch all across the board. Every single one of my rods are 36 inches. Reason being is so at least I know that length is always going to be at the same drop, the same distance, the same everything. I don't need to adjust holes for different kind of rod lengths. So I don't need to drill a further hole. And then all of a sudden I want to switch rods to my other rod. And then I have a 30 inch rod and then I got a 45 inch rod. It just becomes a lot more difficult if I'm keep moving all the time. So I find that that 36 inch is like my go-to size. So 36 inch, medium light, medium, and then medium heavy for all kind of lures, medium light for uh, the drifter and the top hook rig. This medium is great for like a Meigs or like, um, or, or the Menace for that most part. The medium just gives you that little bit more backbone just in case you hook into those Lakers. Uh, I find that I'm able to tire them out a little quicker than the medium light. So at least I can get them up quick, get them back down quick. You know, they don't tire them out too, too much. This is like my Meigs slash Menace rod. And then I have the medium heavy, which is my lipless crankbait rod lipless crankbait rod or burbit rod whatever you call it it's got that little heavier action not too crazy it's still soft tip like that tip is still very soft um that you're able to tap bottom but this is just my heavy lipless rod i got the knee shine one the new heavy simco i, I believe he calls it simco it's the knee shine lipless crankbait awesome bait super heavy you can choose the the angle you want it to be on so i have it on the middle one so at least when I'm banging the bottom, you know, it has that really tip. It's more tip in the nose. So it leaves that top hook pretty exposed all the time. And they eat that top hook pretty good. I don't know why it's blurry. But but yeah, those are my three rods. You know, 36 inch all across the board. People have been asking what rod for this, what rod for that. Honestly, you got to find your fit. But I find that 36 inch for me is the perfect size. It sits perfect away from my hut. I don't need to have crazy far holes and then all of a sudden my rod, my rod hits the heater and all that stuff. I don't have much room in this hut, even though I do have the big hut. With all this camera gear and stuff going on, you lose a lot of room. Space is everything when it comes to it. So got some big fish on it and uh, it's done the job just fine. So if you do guys want to get one of these, these are all custom tied, beautiful, beautiful rods. Ice custom rods, link will be in the bio. Check them out on Instagram, shoot them a message. They'll, uh, they'll help you out. But other than that, you know, that's about it. Batteries are dead. Without further ado, thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate every single one of you. If you wish to reach out to me, shoot me a message on my Instagram. Make sure you follow me um, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks again, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, smash that like button, and we'll see you on the next one.